Welcome, Ms. Shannon Kemp, and I'm the Executive Editor of Dataversity. We would like to thank you for joining November's installment of the monthly Dataversity webinar series, Real World Data Governance with Bob Sinner. Today we'll be discussing governing data, big, small, big and small, come one, come all. Just a couple of points to get us started. Due to the large number of people that attend these sessions, you will be muted during the webinar. For questions, we will be collecting them in the Q&A in the bottom right-hand corner of your screen. If you like to tweet, we encourage you to share highlights or questions via Twitter using hashtag RWDG, Real World Data Governance. As always, we will send a follow-up email within two business days containing links to the slides, the recording of the session, and additional information requested through the webinar. Let me introduce to you our speaker today, Bob Seiner. Bob is the President and Principal of KIK Consulting and Educational Services and the publisher of the Data Administration Newsletter, TDAN.com. Bob has been a recipient of the DEMA Professional Award for significant and demonstrable contributions to the data management industry. Bob specializes in non-invasive data governance, data stewardship, and metadata management solutions. And with that, I will give the floor to Bob to introduce the webinar. Hello and welcome. Thank you very much, Shannon. Thank you, like always. Thank you, Dataversity, like always. And thank all of you for taking time out of your busy schedule to, to sit in the monthly webinar series. As I uh, had mentioned, the name of this uh, uh, this installment of Real World Data Governance is Governing Data, Big and Small, Come One, Come All. And we're going to talk a little bit about big data. We're going to talk a little bit about something that probably hasn't gotten a whole lot of press yet. That might be getting some press soon, and it's something called small data. And if we're going to talk about how governing data, just to begin with, is uh, how, how it's impacted whether or not the data is big or small. And we're going to touch on a couple of different things. We're going to see what some of the people in the industry are saying. And we're also going to share some insights uh, and some considerations on um, managing or governing your data, or whether it's really big data governance or we're really just governing data. So again, thank you very much for attending the session today. So with that, uh, what I'd like to do is I'd also like to, I'd like to let you know about the upcoming um, seminars, they are the upcoming installments of the Real World Data Governance webinar series. And in December, we'll be talking about data governance expectations and how we get to set expectations effectively for the management in our organization and how we can focus on getting the business people to speak up and share with us where governance is going to add value rather than always trying to tell them where governance will add value in their organization. So I think that's going to be a really interesting installment of the webinar series. And then in January, February, and March, you see we're going to talk about a, a data governance framework of success and an operating model of roles and responsibilities. In February, we'll be talking about data governance policy, what it is, if it's necessary, how it will be used within organizations. And then in March, we've got a really interesting session called Agile Data Governance. And I'm going to have a special guest that's going to be with me during that webinar. We're going to talk about Agile. We're going to talk about data governance and how to sync up and how we can learn from one to help to be successful in the other. So with that being said, let's kind of move into the abstract and hopefully the reason why you're here for the webinar today. We all know that big data is a big subject these days and big data is getting a whole lot of play um, in the technology, in the data management aspects of it. And um, we also have been hearing about the term called big data governance. And sometimes I get asked the question as to whether or not there really is some, something uh, such as big data governance. And I mentioned this before in previous webinars, but I haven't. My thought is that, that uh, sure, there is big data governance, but it isn't really any much different, at least, from governing other types of data in our organization. So I would say there is the governance of big data, but not necessarily a specific industry called Called big data governance, and we'll talk about that a little bit more as we move into the uh, into the webinar sessions here. So, like I've been asked that question many times in different venues, and I would say here that I'm going to answer it once and for all. The the truth is, people are going to continue to have that question, and hopefully, at some point, they'll be able to uh, make decisions as to whether or not there is such a thing as specifically big data governance. So, one of the things that I'm going to try to challenge you with is a couple different aspects of of uh, considerations for governing data. And then at one point, I'm going to kind of sit back and, if I can, I don't know how successful we'll be, but I'm going to kind of turn it over to you guys and see if you have the things about big data that you need to govern that would be different from some of the other aspects 
of going data that we're going to talk about here in the session. So if I challenge you, if I try to make you think, hopefully we'll get a little bit of response from you. But start thinking about that. What are some of the things about big data that need to be governed differently than any other type of data within our organization? So we'll get to that in a couple of slides here. But uh, again, so that many organizations are considering big data solutions. We were going to talk about the aspects of big data that might require some type of special attention. Uh, some of these main issues are the same issues. Some of them may differ. And so we're going to talk about things that are similar and things that are different. And then, uh, so again, I just welcome you uh, to sit back and participate if you can. And uh, love to hear from you as to what your thoughts are around governing data, whether it's big or small. And uh, glad to see a whole bunch of you on the call today. So um, the term that I used of small data, I kind of say it, uh, you think I might have made up that term, but in fact, things I've started to read are indicating that there is something called small data that is, le is at least at some point going to be talked about in the data management industry. And so what exactly is small data? Well, really the question for this session is what exactly is big data? We're going to talk about that, but small data, from my understanding, is when people take take big data sets and they break them down into smaller usable sets and the quality that that data is going to have to have and the metadata and the uh, accountability for that data within an organization. So I'm not necessarily saying that there's going to be something such as small data governance, but the governance of small data certainly is something that we need to consider. And it's not a term that I made up and uh, you know, hopefully uh, at some point they'll get a, it'll get a little bit more press and uh, people will start to talk about small data in the same way that they're talking about big data. I'm not sure that the technology is going to become as important, but um, small data may become the next big thing around data at some point in the near future. So what I want to do throughout this webinar is I want to throw out a couple of different quotes that I've seen over the years about big data. And if you can recall, if, if you were attending this webinar series back a year ago, we did another webinar on big governance, and I believe at some point in the 2014 schedule, we've got another webinar that's scheduled about big data governance. And so the question is, how is the industry going to be changing between now and then? Are there going to be more technologies? Are there going to be newer technologies? Is big data governance going to become something that's going to take off? Well, we don't know, so check back a year from now. Just like uh, if you attended the session a year, a year ago, uh, there's a whole bunch of things that have been written and said about big data and data governance that I'm going to share with you. So this gentleman, Clint Finley from ReadWrite.com, back in 2011, wrote that in short, big data simply means data sets that are large enough to be difficult to be worked with. So exactly how big is big? Well, I guess the beauty is in the eye of the beholder there. So there's no true definition as to a size of a data set, at least not that I've seen, a size of a data set that would then be considered to be big data versus any other type of data in the organization. Certainly, uh, when we're talking about terabytes and we're talking about petabytes and we're talking about etabytes and all these things that are, are used to describe the big data, certainly data sets are getting bigger and bigger, and therefore big data and the technology used to be able to manage the data coming from the, the big data is certainly blossoming at this point, and there's a lot of information out there. There's a lot of information out on the Dataversity site about big data, and there's a lot being written and talked about. So, so here's our agenda for today. We're going to talk about what is big data. We're going to talk about considerations, specific considerations for governing big data. We're going to talk about big data and whether or not people think that big data governance is truly a thing, or is it, again, just the governance of the big data. We're about, again, governing that data, and then we're going to spend a little bit of time talking about small data and kind of putting into context some of the things that I've been reading about the industry and how small data might be one of the next big things that we'll need to be looking out for. So in my experience, and I've been working in the data governance industry for many years, at least it seems to be many years, there's a whole lot of different types of governance out there that people are interested in. There's certainly data governance. In fact, this week down in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, was the Dataversity and DevTech International Data Governance Winter Conference, and it was attended, attended by hundreds of people, and, and a lot of people kind of come to the word data governance, and then they discuss the difference between data and information governance, and there certainly are some differences, but we hear these terms 
fairly often. We hear of, of data governance and information governance, and there's a whole lot of different reasons why organizations choose to call it information governance. One be because the word data governance hasn't resonated in the past, and information then takes into consideration you know, structured data, unstructured data, and things like that. There's only big data governance as a term that's being thrown out there, and that's something that we want to discuss in the webinar today. I've heard a lot about BI governance, and BI governance tends to be the whole, the governance of the whole BI process from the beginning of defining the data to producing the data and then using the data. So BI governance typically is uh, is alluding to the, the governance of the process around building a BI environment. We've heard the term metadata governance, which is, uh, I'm not sure again that it's a specific discipline itself. Perhaps it's just that we need to govern the metadata, and so therefore we call it metadata governance. There's certainly project governance, corporate governance, process governance, and uh, for one of my clients recently, uh, they used the term customer data governance because they were being very specific about the subset of data that they really wanted to manage or have fall under the auspices of their data governance program. So there's a lot of different types of governance. Certainly there's People think there's something called big data governance, but we're going to debate that a little bit and we'll talk about um, what are some of the definitions of even calling it big data governance versus just the governance of big data. So, um, again, as I typically get started, for those of you who have not been on one of my webinars before, and uh, I wanted to share the definitions that I use for data governance and for data stewardship and talk about them here real briefly. But if you notice, there's nothing in the definition that that points to big data or small data or metadata or customer data. It just says that data governance is the execution and enforcement of authority over the management of data and data-related resources. And again, the reason that I put that kind of a teeth behind the definition, and this definition truly does make some organizations cringe and say it's worded too strongly, because at the end of the day, this is what we're typically trying to achieve. We're trying to achieve the execution and enforcement of authority over the management of data. As And I've seen other definitions of data governance. There's the harmonization or the orchestration of people and process and data. And it all sounds very good and it all sounds very soft. Uh, I like to have a definition that has a little bit of teeth behind it, and that's why I use this definition. My definition of data stewardship is a little bit uh, less uh, aggressive or less uh, uh, less difficult to understand, should I say. When I say data stewardship is the formalization of accountability over the management of data, again, we're not saying over the management of big data or big data resources. So the definitions, I'm not saying, I, I believe that we don't really need to have a separate definition for big data governance versus data governance, but all we would say is that we're going to execute and enforce authority over the management of big data and big data resources. So again, use definitions that make sense to you. And if you have a definition that you'd like to put into the chat uh, box here on the uh, webinar and share with people, I'm sure that that would be very interesting for people to share definitions of the governance and whether or not they have a definition of what big data governance is being considered within their organization or within your organization. So you also have heard me talk about non-invasive data governance, and non-invasive data governance is kind of what I, I practice when I am working with an organization where I, I think that the fact uh, that we already govern data to a certain ex uh, extent within our organization, sometimes it's very informal, inefficient, and ineffective, and all we really need to do is put some formality around it. And it's a bit different than a command and control approach. Actually, it's a lot different than a command and control approach. So the non-invasive data governance, the definition that I use is it's the practice of applying formal accountability through non-invasive roles and responsibilities to existing processes to assure these things take care of those things. Basically, to assure that the definition, production, and usage of data assure regulatory compliance, security, and so on and so forth. Uh, one of the things that I noticed when I was going through this slide deck is I'm not really sharing a whole lot of the templates and things that I share, have shared in previous webinars, but if you're interested in those templates, please let us know, and we'll be glad to send those off to you just as a way of, of taking into consideration the non-invasive approach to data governance. So non-invasive describes how governance is applied, how the goal is to be transparent and supportive and collaborative, 
of whether that's big data or media data, that's a term I really haven't heard yet, but who knows, somebody out there might be coming up with that term sometime soon, or small data, which is, again, the topic that seems to be getting a little bit of, of play right now, or a little bit of press, and we're going to talk about that again in a couple of minutes here. So whether that data is on the desktop and the server or the cloud, we need to be able to govern data within our organizations. We want to do it in the most practical way possible. I believe that way is by, by taking the non-invasive approach and identifying and recognizing people as stewards rather than assigning them to be data stewards. If you're interested, take a look at the uh, the rest of the, the Real World Data Governance webinar series that's on the Dataversity site. There's a whole lot of uh, past webinars that address the non-invasive approach in great detail. But we're not going to do that today. We're going to talk about big data, and we're going to talk about small data, and we're going to talk about the differences or the similarities between those. So what I'm going to do again is share with you a definition or at least a list of what the categories of big data are, according to Krish Krishnan, who is a pretty well-known writer in, uh, in different places, the I network information management, but he talks about categories of big data. He talked about unstructured data as big data or semi-structured data. And he defines, again, the semi-structured data as being you know, earnings reports, spreadsheets, software modules, and those types of things. Structured data being data that comes in bits and bytes in rows and columns in databases, machine data, mathematical, mathematical model outputs. But the truth is that you take a look, a look at these and say these are categories for data just in general. We've got unstructured data, and we've got data that's in documents, and we've got document management, content management, records management, knowledge management that, that cover all sorts of different types of data, but not necessarily categories of big data. It's categories of data. And again, we also talked about characteristics of big data. And one of the things, if you've done reading on big data in the past, you've seen talk about the three Vs. The three B, Vs, I only have two of them listed here, but were volume and variety, and the V is velocity. And again, we'll talk about that in a minute here. But Trish, in this article that I allude to, he's talking about some common characteristics of big data, the volume of data or the size of the databases, the variety of the data, the different formats that it comes in, the ambiguity and the quality of the data. But again, I would say that if we crossed out the word big and we used volume, variety, ambiguity, quality as a way of being able to look at any type of data that we have. And back in the 80s and 90s when I was getting started in the, in the industry, we always took a look at how large the database was going to be. So think about the volume as being something new. Well, when we're talking about massive amounts of data that, we're, that we talk about with big data, yes, volume becomes a big issue. But volume has been an issue since databases were built and, and since people started to manage those databases, size those databases. The variety, there's a lot of different varieties of data. There's a lot of ambiguity in the data across an organization. So these aren't necessarily just common characteristics of big data. They're common characteristics of really any type of data that we work with within our organization. So definition of big data. Big data is a term applied to data sets whose size is beyond the ability of common use software to capture, manage, and process. So we're talking about very large data sets here. And what's interesting is there was a, a big data quick poll that was taken a few years ago, and I wanted to share the results with you here that when people ask what big data is, 51%, um, so a little bit more than half, said that it's a legitimate problem stemming from the growth of unstructured data in our organizations. Well, the truth is big data does not just allude to unstructured data. It alludes to very high-volume data sets as well. But some of the other results of this survey are, are some things that I found to be quite interesting, that people thought that it was a new catchway, uh, a new catchway for an old data management challenge. Like I just said, people have been concerned about the size of the database since the beginning of databases. But a lot of people, even back when this survey was taken, and it was two years ago, or it was within the last two years, the people were thinking that big data is just another way to say data warehouse, or another way to say Hadoop, or it's a meaningless marketing catchphrase. Well, the truth is, big data is real, and big data needs to be governed, and we need the metadata, we need the design 
and we need the accountability for big data the same as we need it for any type of data in our organization. So going back to 2001, a, a gentleman who is also a friend of mine, Doug Laney, uh, had mentioned the three Vs that were associated with big data. So he talked about volume and velocity and variety, and if you've done reading on big data, you've probably come across these three Vs a multitude of times. So just want to think about it again, volume of, is the amount of data, the velocity is the speed that it's coming in and the speed that data needs to go out. The variety is well, what different types of data do we need to govern? And if we're talking about unstructured data, then it's certainly going to take a specific set of tools to work with unstructured data versus just a high volume relational data if data is stored that way. So we talk about big data. Big data has emerged because of what's happening in our universe, basically. The, the data that we have continues to grow, and there are between 4.6 billion mobile phone subscribers in the world, and between 1 billion and 2 billion people accessing the internet. And all that is is truly the exchange of data back and forth, and so the volume of data that is moving on at any given time continues to grow. And it also said that between 1990 and 2005, more than a billion people entered the, million, the middle class meaning that either it was a, a, either through increases in the amount of money that they had or through the reduction in the price of technologies, these days have got more and more people that are calling for more and more data at all times. And so the, the amount of data and what is big data just continues to grow. In fact, the world's effective capacity to exchange information in 1986 was 281 petabytes. It's kind of size that I can't even fathom. 471 petabytes in 93, 2.2 exabytes, 65 exabytes in 2007, and they were saying that it would be 667 exabytes annually by 2013. So now, just by no hands here, how many people know what an exabyte is? I know what an exabyte was until I looked it up. And this is what an exabyte is. It's a one with 18 zeros after it. So it's 10 to the 18th power bytes and 1,000 petabytes and a billion gigabytes. So um, big data. When we're talking about big data, we're no longer talking about it in terms that, that most people are used to. We're, we're using the terms petabytes and exabytes and who knows what we start to call it after that or what it is called after that. I'm sure they've already they all know what it's called after that. I just haven't. Uh, fathomed data that was that large at, at any given time. So what are they saying about big data on the net? Big data is a catchphrase that's been bubbling up for a long time. Uh, big data is hard to do. It's very expensive and time-consuming. I just wanted to share with you a couple thoughts of other people that are out there in the industry and what they're saying about big data. But this doesn't really answer the question of governing the big data. How does it compare to governing other data that we have? And we're going to get to that here. In one second. Before I get to that, I wanted to share with you one more slide from a good friend of mine, Karen Lopez, Data Chick. She has a webinar series as well on data diversity. And uh, if you've ever talked to Karen, you know she is, is can be quite um, quite informed and uh, quite uh, um, amusing as well. She started a rant on big data, and she was telling us that you know, asking somebody asked her the question, "What's big data?" And she said that she was here to tell you that nobody really knows what big data is. The good about big data is just that. It can be anything that you want it to be. But I'm sure some definitions as to what would be considered big data, but I think it's in the most often it's in the, uh, in the eyes of the beholder. So one of the things that she noticed about big data was that people capitalized data. And they capitalized the word data. Um, and so I'm wondering, when small data comes around, are we going to... Uh, let me spell small data in small letters because we uh, spell big data in big data, uh, big letters. So she was the next thing we could have is huge data and ginormous data by next year's Enterprise Data World in Austin, the uh, Dataversities event. Um, the truth is there may be more talk about small data than there is about huge data or ginormous data or, or data that is any bigger than that or big data, basically. So when we're talking about governing data, just in general, about um, we need to define what we really mean by governing something. That's one of the things that a lot of organizations are talking data governance, but they haven't necessarily taken a step back 
and, and talk to people in their organization about truly what it means to govern the data within their organization. So I to the free dictionary as done in the past, and so what does the free dictionary tell us that governing is? And the definition that they gave was to make and administer public policy, to, to exercise sovereign authority, to control speed, to regulate, control actions or behaviors of other. And all I did was add to data around the government. So to govern data means to exercise sovereign authority in data. And if you recall back to the definition that I used at the beginning of the webinar, talk about execution and enforcement of authority over data. So really, it does go to the definition of govern, but in order to control the actions or behavior of data, a good friend of mine, Len Silverstein, once said um, that we're really governing the data itself. We're governing people's behavior associated with that data. So when it comes to big data or small data or any other types of data that we talked about governing, um, certainly what we want to do is we want to, I wouldn't necessarily say control the actions or behaviors, but we want to be able to influence the actions or behaviors of individuals and people within the organization. We can't really control the actions or the behavior of the data, but we can control the actions uh, and the behavior of the people associated with the data within our organizations. And that certainly holds true for any big data set that we would use to perform analytics, anything that we will do with our big data. So when we talk about governance, we're talking about formalizing accountability. I, I mentioned the Bill of Rights here. It's an article that I published in the recent issue of CN.com. The Bill of Rights is getting the right people involved at the right time, using the right data, the right way to make the right decision leads to the right results. So that's what I mean by the Bill of Rights. Um, assuring compliance, following rules, understanding the data, reducing risk. That is what governance means. And and unless somebody can inform me differently, I would believe that that's what it means around big data as well. We need to formalize the accountability for the big data. We need to, again, get the right people involved at the right time when we are working with the big data. We need to assure that that big data is compliant. It's not getting to the hands of people that, that probably shouldn't see that data. It follows the rules. There's improved understanding of the data. What governance does not mean is command and control or slowing down or adding bureaucracy. In some organizations, it may mean those things. We take an approach that's more practical, something that takes advantage of things that we have in our organizations. Um, data governance does not have to mean all about command and control and slowing down and adding bureaucracy and those types of things. So about the considerations for governing big data. So first, let's talk about go uh, considerations for governing any type of data within our organization. And then please share with me if it makes sense that, uh, you know, how is this different for big data than it is for small data versus customer data or product data or BI data? Um, it's pretty much the same. And I, I'd love to hear from you if you think that it's different. And if I don't hear from anybody, then it, it kind of assures the, uh, it confirms the fact that maybe there's not a whole lot of things in big data that need special attention, but we will talk about some of them here in a couple minutes. So some of the considerations for governing any type of data um, is the definition of the data or the production or usage of the data. And I always talk about governance in terms of definition, production, and usage, formalizing accountability, governing processes. So there's risk management, but we've got risk management with any data that we have in the organization, whether it's compliance and regulatory control, uh, data classification, which is highly sensitive, maybe um, sensitive, maybe highly confidential, and classification of the data that way, or data security. So we need to secure data if it's big or small. But the issues around securing the data may be different because of the size of the data sets, but then again, maybe it's not. So um, governing your data of any size requires at least these governance basics and these risk management aspects as well. Um, the discipline, the issue resolution, and the certification of the data, the quality control, um, governing that data in a proactive way or a reactive way. Um, the bottom line is that you may really need to consider these things for governing any type of data, whether it's big data or small data or medium-sized data or just any data in any database in your organization. Roles and responsibilities can be similar. We've got people at the executive and strategic levels who have an interest or concern in the data, the tactical, the operational and the support levels as well. 
So I don't necessarily say that you need to redesign an existing governance program to uh, to govern data across your organization, including your big data. So I've, I've done some webinars on an operating model of roles and responsibilities. The one coming up early in the first quarter of next year is a framework for data governance that includes all of these layers. And a little bit at the, in that webinar about the differences for the different types of data in the organization. But for right now, I would say that you need to at least consider having executive and strategic level people and tactical operational and support people when it comes to the data in your organization and the governance of that data in your organization. On the communication planning, when we communicate about data governance, whether it's big data or small data or any type of data, um, do we need, we need to recognize who the audience is that that we're working with? Is it the executive and strategic level? Because we're certainly going to communicate with them differently than we're going to communicate with other people in the organization. What's the messages that we need to communicate? What are the tools that we're going to use to deliver that communication? Certainly in information governance, and information governance oftentimes means different things to different organizations, but most often I've seen information governance um, allude to the fact that there's process governance and technology governance and policy governance in some organizations. Uh, stewardship, all these things are important for information governance, for data governance, for structured, uh, structured data governance and unstructured data governance. So there's a lot of considerations for governing any type of data in the organization. If you feel that it's important to call it big data governance, to focus on just the big data in your organization, I'm not here to tell you that you shouldn't do that. I would want you to consider that there's governance of all different types of data in your organization, not necessarily something that's different from data than versus any other type of data in your organization. So what are the, some, some of the similarities between governing big data and other versus other types of data? Well, there's the governance, so there's the, the governance of the definition of the data. And by the way, the pictures that you see here on the next couple slides uh, did not come from me. They came from my very artistic uh, teenage daughter. And so we can thank her for those. But governing, we've got to govern the definition of the data, and we've got to govern the production of the data and the usage of the data. When we talk about big data, we also have to be probably more concerned about the volume of the data, the size of the data set, how quickly data comes in and out. I'm not sure it's different or, or vastly different for big data sets than it is for other types. And the variety of data, whether it's big or small, we as an organization, and that we need to also govern the unstructured data. Most organizations will start with the structured data and then get into the unstructured data. But there's a lot of organizations that I've had uh, contact with and that I've worked with that have viewed unstructured data as being something that was very important for them to be able to govern in their organization. And sometimes the volume of that unstructured data is so large that some organizations will consider that to be um, data as well. You know, to creation, his uh, the quote that he early uh, early on in this slide deck talked about, about the different types of data and the unstructured data and how unstructured also plays such a big piece in in big data in organizations. Another similarity between governing big data versus other data is the governance of the definition of the data. And to be able to govern the data redundancy, the data definition, the metadata management, the, or the metadata about that data, uh, we model data. Similarities, again, between big data and other types of data in, orga in the organization as it uh, relates to the definition of the data. Unless I uh, start seeing a, a slew of people saying how the governance of the definition of the big data is different from the governance of other, any other type of data, well, if we're not seeing that, then maybe people believe that uh, governing data is the same whether it's big or maybe not the same, but very similar no matter if it's big or small or medium-sized data. Um, similarities between the production of the data. Now, this may be a little bit different uh, with big data. An organization I worked with recently, uh, an oil and gas company, they had their wells offshore, and those wells uh, and those platforms that were out in the Gulf of Mexico had thousands of sensors at them that were pumping back data to the, um, to the organization um, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So very, very high volume data. But that was very different than uh, how data is produced in other places and, uh, and data that may not be considered big data. Um, so we've got to worry about the origination, where it comes from, the creation of that data, who's responsibility for it. Again, very similar. The things that we need to govern 
when we're governing any type of any size of data within our organization. Uh, the usage as well. There's regulatory and compliance. There's privacy, security, the distribution of the data. Again, we need to, to govern the usage of the data, whether that data is big or small. And if it's different for big, then please, somebody indicate that for us all. So we see that there is such a thing as big data governance out there rather than just the governance of big data. And so again, governing the volume, velocity, and variety, the same thing holds true. Is it really that much different than what we're going to do around the governance of other types of data in our organization that we need to call out as something that's specifically different? So yes, we need to be concerned with the volume. Yes, we need to be concerned with velocity and variety. But the same thing holds true for any type of data that we have in our organization, not just the big data. Maybe it's a, a, a bigger issue, or maybe it's just that we need to be able to apply different types of technology to it. But the actual governance of the data itself, um, certainly there's such a thing out there as technology governance, but as the governance of the data itself goes, um, not a whole lot of differences between the, uh, the governance of big data and the governance of any other size data within our organization. So what are some of the differences, if there are any differences between governing big data versus other data? Well, we need technology, as I alluded to earlier, the, the uses of technology to manage that data, to store that data, to make that data available. So here's the point right now where I'm going to ask you if you're stuck out there, what do you see as being some of the differences between governing big data versus other data? And we'll share some of that if people have the interest in, in sharing that with us, or maybe you feel the same way that I do, is that, that the um, there's really a lot of similarities between how we govern big data and how we govern uh, other types of data within our organization. So please take, uh, uh, if you get a chance, uh, send some of this information and as it says, feel free to tell. It's uh, nice to get some interaction from you folks, see if you're uh, in fact awake, still awake out there. But let's talk about governance of big data again for a second here. Talk about the volume, the velocity, the variety, the tool usage. Some of the things that, that I uh, I'm not be as uh, as well versed in the no SQL, but certainly the simplicity of use, the complexity, structured data, unstructured, all of these things are things that we need to consider when we're governing uh, when we're governing data of any type in our organization. We certainly need to be concerned about the metadata that sits behind the data. It's going to hold true for the people that are using. It. I'm seeing some people send in some responses, so this is. Uh, this is good. Um, but the idea, again, is to um, think that, that governing big data may have specific issues, um, but it's also a lot like uh, the, the governance of any other type of data within our organization. So let's talk a little bit about governance and stewardship and big data. So in a recent report that came out at TDWI, uh, data stewardship came up quite often in the um, in this report, and they talked about people that were managing big data efforts took the idea of adding big data initiatives to their existing data governance ecosystem. And to me, that was somewhat humorous. You know, I was thinking that um, that that it would probably be the other way around. Actually, I would think that if you have if you have the existing uh, governance ecosystem, that you just identify what the differences are and what the similarities are between governing the data, uh, the big data, as it, again, compares to any other data that's being governed by that data governance ecosystem. And when there's a problem during the big data management, a lack of stewardship or governance was set by a third of the people, second only to inadequate skills or staffing of big data initiatives. So a lot of organizations are saying that stewardship and governance is very important when it comes to big data. Do we need to call that big data governance? Again, that's up to you. And I'm seeing a bunch of responses in the chat area, which I'd love to get to when I get to the end of the slide deck here. But again, thank you for, uh, for participating in the webinar that way. It always makes it interesting. So we talked about big data, and we talked about small uh, regular data. We talked about any differences between governing the different types of data. I want to talk about small data here for a second. The first question that I have is, is there really something that is called small data? out there, or will there become something that is called small data? And uh, Karen Lopez mentioned that big data seems to be capitalized. Well, small data, I guess if we refer to it as small data, we should refer to it in lowercase. 
because uh, that gives people the idea that it's small. Yes, but, uh, but so what is it, small death? Um, I want to share with you again something to read, and I try to, to read a lot about what's going on in the industry, and somebody seemed to say that it's inevitable, but IT experts are being to claim that small data anal uh, analysis is the next big buzzword. So we're not going to go from from big to huge data to gigantic data. Um, we're gonna we may actually start looking at what small data is. And while big data is getting all the the headlines, it says small data is the next big thing. Big data and the values associated with combining. I love the word culling vast structured and unstructured data sets for business insights. So we're talking about culling data. We're taking the data, larger sets of data, and making them small and more manageable. And so when we have those small and manageable data sets, and we have folks that are focusing on using that data to do either analytics or to make core decisions or to identify that data in terms of its key performance indicators, um, you know, maybe smaller sets of data that we're more concerned with. And if there's more sets of data that are very, uh, very uh, called uses uh, that are used for business insight, oftentimes it becomes very important that people understand that data. Where did it come from? How did they get here? How is that data different from any other data that we have in the organization? But small data is in the use of the small data sets um, in organizations. And at some point, when the when the large data is just or big data becomes just another thing in organizations, perhaps the focus will turn to the small data. Says so it may be uh, it may be too big for all, but the largest enterprise have time, money, and expertise to build a big data platform. Um, maybe it's too large. Maybe it's something that we can't manage the vast amount of data that we have, and that we need to break it down into small data sets. So it's just something that I would want you to consider. And again, one of the goals of this webinar series is to make you think about some of the things that we're talking about here and whether or not you think that small data is something that's going to be uh, very important in the near future. The possibility of individuals owning small data would mark a startling change from the world of big data profiles and marketing. So again, this came from eWeek.com. said, I'm not the, the business world is ready for that yet, but I think that we'd own our information and decide, well, there's that word own again. And we use the term ownership, and a lot of organizations use the term ownership when it comes to um, as responsibility for data in the organization. I, I know that I, in the past, mentioned that I try to stay away from the term own. But when it's to small data sets, perhaps that will be a word that will be kind of reintroduced into the vocabulary for data governance programs, is people own small data sets, and they have the responsibility for making sure that that data is governed very well in order to be used to, be, to make important decisions within an organization. So there's data and there's small data. One last summary of Amorai's um, data governance and small data. I say it, it, if we define small data as being data that is limited to purpose, high quality, documented, easy to use, uh, easy access and easy to use to improve organizational analytics, then at some point there will need to be a uh, the governance around that small data. So therefore, are, are there not too many people out there that would argue that in order to provide this small data, there will be a level of small uh, of governance associated with that data as well. So therefore, if small data is something real, there will be small data governance at some point in time. So we've got data governance now. In the future, I would look for the potential of being small data governance. So the burning questions are, what impact does big data have on data governance efforts and vice versa? Um, actually, I think it's more what's the impact of big data, what does data governance have on big data? And, and what, what do we need to do? Is there anything that we need to do different than the other type of governing we do in our organization? And to be honest with you, I haven't seen too many people come across and say that, that um, the big data needs its own type of governance. So what aspects of governance need to be altered for governing data? What governance roles and processes must be uh, directed towards big data? Again, we've kind of summarized here that the governance of the big data and the governance of the small data and the in-between data is somewhat similar. So what's the relationship between the governance of big data, the existing aspects of our, our data and information governance that we can directly apply um, from the definition to the production to the use of that data? You know, my suggestion, as always, would be to stay non-invasive in your approach to governing big data, and there's a lot of information out there about uh, 
about invasive data governance. Um, there may be some additional technical complexities, maybe some additional technologies and data complexities. Please feel free to share that with us and respond to the email that Shannon sends. And if you've got some insight as to how big data governance or small data governance may be different from any other type of governance, I'd love to start that conversation with you, and there's a lot of places where that can be addressed. We talked about what is big data. We talked about considerations for governing big data and big data governance, governing data, and then we talked about small data. In a second, I'd love to take some questions. If there's some questions that are out there, I believe that there might be. And uh, just, again, to let you know that the monthly webinar series in December, we're talking about governance expectations um, in January and February. February and March, we're talking about the framework of success, the governance policy, and then agile data governance. And I think that's going to be a really interesting webinar in itself. So with that, I'd like to say thank you very much and kind of turn it back to Shannon. And if there are any questions that uh, we'd like to address. Thank you, Bob. Another great presentation, as always. Uh, you know, uh, th one of the most common questions, of course, that we get is, you know, are, it, will people get a copy of the slide? and the recording, which, as you mentioned, will go out in the follow-up email within two business days. So by end of day Monday for this webinar, if you don't have it in your inbox by Tuesday morning, let me know, and I'll be sure to uh, get you a copy. That's Shannon at dataversity.net. Um, and everyone's so quiet today. I think everyone's just winding down for the holidays, Bob, um, or at least at those in the U.S. <laughs> There we go. There we've got a question. Um, would it work to have big data defined as useful data over which we have no controls and cannot validate? What a scary thing, isn't it, to have data that we have no control over, especially if it's data that is um, is really important to organization. So um, I don't know. I've never heard of the term useful data, but again, if it makes sense in your organization um, to define the data that way, then feel free to, to do that. I mean, it, it, there's nothing to say that you need to call anything in particular, but useful data is, uh, is certainly um, something that you would want to have control over. So if you cannot control your data and you cannot validate your data, it is my hope or expectation that you're not using that data to make valid business decisions around data. Um, the, uh, again, it's useful. All data, at least you would hope that most of the data that you collect would be considered useful data for your organization. What are some tools that you recommend for, for governing big or small? Well, there's a lot of tools out there, and that's a really great question. And, um, and, and there's a lot of vendors and a lot of software companies that have great tool sets that are, can be used to, to help you capture metadata about the data, to help you to put some structure around the governance in your organization. But it, I've mentioned this in the past where I'm not necessarily thinking that we need to have um, have specific type of governance or specific um, types of tools. Oftentimes it's easy to be able to develop tools internally within an organization where you can create things like a common data matrix that I've used in, in many other of the webinars that I've given or governance activity matrices. I mean, there are a lot of tools out there that will add value, but recognize that with the tools comes a learning curve and it takes governance of the tools themselves in order to be to make them successful. I would view tools as being enablers to data governance programs and metadata programs, not necessarily the programs themselves. Uh, any events or conferences that you'd like to recommend? I, of course, love that question. <laughs> Certainly, there's a lot of great conferences. There was a great conference this week, a, a data diversity conference. There's uh, and a dev tech conference. There's a conference in Austin, Texas, in April, uh, April and at the beginning of, uh, of May as well, with the Enterprise Data World. I mean, there's a lot of events that are out there, um, and so I would suggest taking, uh, keeping your eye on dataversity.net and seeing what events they're talking about, because uh, most of that type of information is available there the list out of all of our conferences as well. Um, and as I mentioned, of course, Enterprise Data World covers the full spectrum, and we have several governance-specific conferences. Yeah, um, coming in the chat area, so I don't know if there's questions. If people know that the – I know you've mentioned that people should put their questions in the Q&A area. Uh, so if you put questions into the chat area, uh, make it easier on Shannon and, and kind of put them in the, in the Q&A area if you can. 
<laughs> Perfect. Thank you. Uh, is, next question. Um, is MDM data governance a subset of enterprise data governance? Ooh, question. MDM data governance. I'll say again, I'm not sure that there is some, such a thing as MDM data governance. Um, the governance of the master data, we, we know that we see the terms master data and data governance kind of joined at the hip in a lot of things that we read and in presentations that we see. Um, the governance of data that is under the auspices or under the um, directorship of the MDM program certainly needs to have governance. We need to be certain that we're talking about what the, the true master data looks like for the organization, what the, the metadata is associated with that data, the processes that we use to bring the master data together. So there, there are a lot of, uh, of things in the master data discipline that require data governance. So I've considered it to be a subset of your data governance initiative. Certainly, it could be a subset, but again, it's not its own thing. Um, the governance of master data would be the same as governance of big data, I would think. Chat's going too. Um, what information can we get from lots of data that we can't get from a sample of that data? Uh, question one more time, please. So what can we get from a lot of data that we can't get from a sample, from a statistical sample of that data? That's a great question. And so I guess... Um, I'm not necessarily an expert on big data, but I'd be glad to try to answer that question. Um, what we're doing is more of a sampling of whether or not it's customer behavior or industry behavior or, or chins or whatever it is. The more data that we have, the better able to predict what the future is going to be and what certain activities are going to provoke other activities from taking place. So. Um, that's the, the the high volume of the data and the and the Kmart's and the and the WalMarts and the oil and gas companies that are are big adopters of big data technology. They're trying to monitor large uh, volumes of information that help them to predict and know when something is happening that shouldn't be happening, or when something is happening that needs to be addressed. So that type of things that you can get out of large volumes of data as compared to smaller volumes of data. One of the differences with big data is that even though regular data governance tends to build quality through consistency, some of the big data information not, may contain uh, intrinsic, intrinsic value, and we may not need to build substantial data quality. And, oh, it's not really a question, just kind of a comment here. Uh, substantial data quality consistency in order to not break up that. Uh, oh, dear, you got cut off there. And there's some there's some truth in that. I mean, when we're looking at higher volumes of data, maybe we don't need to necessarily be as concerned about down to the data element and the value of the data and the in the data in the piece of data that we're looking at. But we still need to be worried about the volume or about the the quality of the data. We need to think about uh, where the data came from, how it's defined, because a whole lot of data that's defined very poorly is just a bigger problem than a small amount of data that's defined and, and produced very poor, poorly. So um, there, there's some truth to what he said, but there, uh, uh, there's certainly some relationship there. Uh, next question, should derived data uh, or does data need to be governed? Derived, certainly, data, derived data needs to be governed. Um, when you think about the fact that uh, a derivation of a piece of data means that we have some type of a formula or some type of an equation that we come to derive that data from other data, well, certainly there, ne there needs to be a level of an agreement as to how, what that derivation uh, is going to look like, how it's going to be calculated, how it's going to be rolled up, or how it's going to be broke down, and certainly the quality of that information and the quality of the metadata about uh, about that derived data becomes very important as well. So I would say that, yes, derived data needs to be governed uh, not the same uh, than more than other types of, of, of data within the organization. Should we consider the governance of big data is better addressed at the top of strategic plans? No, I don't think so. I, at least that's my opinion, and again, love to hear from from people if they feel differently. But um, now I'll say that we don't necessarily need to put data just because it's big at the top of, of the organization's plans. It, it is a business initiative from an organization.
organization, they need to be able to analyze large volumes of data that are coming at your organization very quickly, then yes, it makes a lot of sense to, to talk about data governance in terms of that big data. But there's no uh, no reason other than that that I can see to tap, kind of put it at the top of the, the data strategy for an organization. Are all those are all the questions we have today? Okay. Well, yeah. Last thing, Shannon. And so, um, what I'd like to do is I'd like to thank everybody again for for attending the webinar. I wish everybody you know, happy Thanksgiving if you're in the U.S. Happy holidays if you're outside of the U.S. But it's been I'm very thankful to be given the opportunity to do this webinar and have you attending in the, uh, to any of the of the series of webinars. So I just wanted to put that out there as well, Shannon. I Bob, thank you so much for this, and thanks everyone for your participation. I just love that the chat's always going, and we get lots of questions throughout these. Uh, and again, I will send a follow-up email within two business days, uh, so by end of day Monday, uh, with links to the slides, links to the recording, and Bob always uh, writes out the answers to your questions as well, so you'll have that, um, and in the additional information requested throughout. So. Uh, and if you don't have that in your inbox by Tuesday morning, you can email me at shannon at dataversity.net, and we will get that information to you. So hope everyone has a great day, and thanks so much for attending. And Bob, thanks again for the, another great presentation. Thank you very much. Take care, everybody. Bye. Bye.